So, right, the last part of the project is to make an eating bowl. This is obviously a ceramic one. The one I'm going to make is wood. But this is one of my favourite eating bowls. And I like it because it sits very nicely in hand like that. And you can just shovel your food into your mouth quite easily. I don't think this is a particularly Viking design. The ones I've seen of the Viking ones are, are, are steeper sides which I might make as well, but I'm going to start trying to make something like this. As I've been rediscovering wood turning, two things have, uh, <laughs> have dawned on me. Um, one is, is how enjoyable it is, the process of, of wood turning, and um, I haven't really done it very much since I was, oh, I don't know, 10 years old, something like that, which is a long time ago now. The other thing is that as a eight to ten year old I was very confident with wood turning thought I knew all about it obviously um, what I realize now is that I think my dad helped me far more than I appreciated at the time for instance the selection of the wood the preparing of the blank um, the mounting of the wood all these things are not in my memory and I think they're not in my memory because I didn't do them I think my dad did those for me so I'm having to learn those things here one of the things I've picked up recently is to avoid when you're it's how to choose the piece of wood basically so initially i assumed that with a bowl you would cut a slice from a round bit like this and then make a bowl there i mean this is already round isn't it so it seemed logical to me but that's not the way to go about it and this is why so this split here shows what happens with the with the end grain now i made that beaker out of end grain and that split a bit but it was wasn't too bad but I think the, the the bigger the thing you make the more that becomes an issue so what I've learned recently is to avoid but is to avoid the pith which is this bit here in the middle and to, to work around that to get something that's less likely to split and when you're turning something that's green you need to allow for it to dry and possibly to move but with hopefully without splitting. I'm going to choose one of these lumps of wood then and use a chainsaw to make a face that I can then get in the lathe and turn the rest. So obviously a Viking wouldn't have used a chainsaw but they would have they would have rived it they would have split it down like I've split this one with an axe they'd have used that to get it into a state at which it could be mounted. So. I suspect your Viking would have used wedges to split it like that and this bean ash splits nice and cleanly um, and then they would have split it like that and then they would have lopped off the corners as well using a carving axe and got it to a you know, rougher shape, do a lot of the rough work like that and then mount it in the lathe and off they go. Hopefully there will be enough of the Vikingness left in it when we're done. <laughs> anyway, as as with all the rest of this project, it's not an historical um, recreation of anything by any means. Just a bit of fun. Right, let's get to it. We need a chainsaw. I'm hoping that will give me what I'm after. I've also cut out this one for a deeper, smaller but deeper bowl. Yeah, but we'll see. This one might be even worse because I've just noticed it had a, a knot coming out the side of it, which is probably a bad idea. Anyway, again, it's just practice. One of the recent changes I've made in Woodworking Corner is to get this bandsaw up and running. And my dad gave me this some years ago and I've never actually used it for anything so this will be its first outing. It took me a long time to actually get the thing working, it all seized up. I've made a circle on there and I'm going to attempt to cut it in the bandsaw. 
for some reason people seem to think metalworking stuff is metalworking machinery is is dangerous but i've always been far more wary of woodworking machinery i mean the bandsaw over there the metal cutting bandsaw goes around at a very mellow pace this thing goes around like the clappers and it's got these huge teeth on it you know that's gonna anyway at least my ears will be safe and my eyes but yeah some steel fingers ready for this So there's our bowl blank. So your Viking then, or your Viking era person, whatever you want to say, so he's got his bowl blank, mounted it like that, and worked his way in. Now I can't do that because as you can see here, the frame and the drive are not that far apart. You can undo this bit. And then this will rotate. Then I can put a faceplate on this and I can mount it on there. Here's the box of bits that came with the lathe. Here's a faceplate. So I'm going to put that there. This will be this part of the bowl. So I'll put the face plate on that bit and then I'll turn this bit, which will be the, the bottom of the bowl. And I'm going to turn it to a similar sort of shape to that so it'll hold an expanding chuck. Which is what this is. Or <laughs> what these parts will make. We'll get into that. I'm sure that's going to work. I think this will just screw onto there. <laughs> a bit too wobbly there as it's as it stands. Sketchy. If it was a much heavier lathe and it was fixed down, it wouldn't be an issue. Just too unbalanced as it is. This is my planer then, it's only a cheapie, but I think it'll do. If it didn't have a planer, I'd just use the chainsaw and have another go at it. Because it wasn't obvious before when I was actually sawing it with a chainsaw, but that's that bit there is loads narrower than that huge chunk there. Split I've discovered then that pretty much does for this blank because um, in this corner here I can't even just take the plate off here flip it over and turn it this way because then I'll just end up the diameter will only be able to be from there and that's just a, <laughs> a bit of a ditty bowl by the time I finished so I'm going to go with a backup option this one can't see any splits in this really. So this will give a deeper sort of like soup bowl. Um, it's going to be a bit tricky because the grain's going in two different directions on this, so I'm kind of making life hard for myself. But this seems to be the only viable lump of wood that I've got left. Um, if this doesn't work, I'm going to have to go and look for some the old uh, like firewood chopping blocks, things like that. But uh, you know, it really is a bit desperate. Anyway, um, right, so I'm going to draw a circle on this, put it through the bandsaw, and then mount this and uh, hope for the best.
Yeah. So even though it's super rough, I know if I rub the bevel, this part of the chisel, and then bring it into cut, I'll be reasonably safe. Uh, I think this is dulled a bit, I'm just going to go and sharpen it on the grinder. So with the sharpening, it's as well to do it just like any sharpening before you really need to, just to put, keep an edge on it rather than taking it right back. I'm going to present the bevel onto there and then I'll pull it forward until I see the sparks running over it and then roll it around and we're done. So back of the chisel rubbing on the bevel and pull it out and just there and that's it done. Lovely little machine. And now we're back to streamers again. It's nice and sharp. So the more rotational mass I'm losing off of the bowl, the easier it's getting to control, which is great. No big splits in it, which is good. So we'll carry on for a bit. I'll just see if this does better. Yeah, gone better with that one in a sense. One tip I did pick up was that you should look at the look at the tool when you start the cut, and then look up here, and you can follow the line across to see where you're going. This is the chuck I'm going to try and use to go on the bottom of the bowl. So I need to cut an aperture now for the chuck to fit. So I've been pondering how these things work. It's got different uh, lumps of aluminium for different diameters. And I think what I've got in there is about what I'm after. Obviously the Vikings wouldn't have used chucks, or indeed laves like that. <laughs> so this is utterly inauthentic, but hey ho, we're having fun. This is very wet wood really and that's possibly why there's so much tearing on it but I'll carry on um, I've got a feeling it's going to split anyway where that where this knot is here but it's all good practice it's been good fun actually
that a little bit more. Good. Right target depth then, so it's just a case of getting the walls to the right thickness. So part of me thinks I should have watched more videos of other people doing this. But another part of me thinks that at some point you've just got to have a go. <laughs> Learn by doing. Doop, 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 doop. Oh. <laughs> There's a bowl. It's a very, very sturdy bowl. There it is. <laughs> it's, it's, it's rather crude. I think the... Uh, so like I said, the last time I turned the bowl, I was probably about 10, and that was a long time ago. I think the 10 year old me wouldn't be that impressed with this effort. But you know, I'm out of practice. And I had to do it all myself this time. There was, um, there was no one here to help me. Yeah, that is something I've realized with the wood turning, how much my dad helped me when I was a kid. Thanks dad. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was a steep learning curve, that was. But it, there it is. It's thick, it's very thick. Um, it's still quite light. So I'm going to leave it like that until it's dr dried. And then, if it survived drying, I'll rechuck it. Because we've still got this recess here. And then I can have another go at it and clean it up some more. As the tool marks are quite hefty in here and I'm putting a lot of that down to just the the wetness of the wood but you know it's a bowl it does look quite a lot like one that was dug up I think well I, I don't know I'll have to go and find the photo and check but I seem to remember there was one that they found in a bog in Dublin that was a Viking turned bowl and it was similar to this and it, it had this, yeah, same sort of look to it, and and it had um, had this bead. It was a bit like this bead, but you can see a practical use for it. You can actually curl your thumb and finger around there, and this would be a, a good. There's one of the spoons. Yeah. Wow, that took some doing. But now I know how to do bowls again, sort of. Yeah. I think I'll find some more wood. Well, I enjoyed that. <laughs> Happy with that. So I've just noticed again, that's the bowl I've just turned. Um, that was the, what I was, <laughs> that's what I was aiming at. Oh well, you got to go with the, What's in the wood? Yeah. <laughs> so much for planned. Anyway, next time, one of these.